Welcome to Off the Beaten Path, but not lost. With Tony, Kristen, Kylie, and Lexi. Join us on this RV full-time living journey. Across the beautiful United States. Where the fail was. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Episode 23. Welcome to Off the Beaten Path but Not Lost with the Faolas. On this 23rd episode, we're going to talk about Florida, specifically Orlando and Bradenton. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Faolas. And you can find the show notes to this episode at thefeolas.com slash 23. All right. So two years ago, we spent um, our winter in Florida two years ago during COVID. Um, and we spent it almost entirely in the Orlando area. Because yeah, we, we were like, yeah, bounced between Orlando and Kissimmee. And that's because we had um, an annual pass to Disney. I guess... I consider that all of Orlando, but we really didn't stay in Orlando at all, probably. Because is Sherwood also Kissimmee? I think it's right on the border, but... Okay. We might as well just call it Orlando. <laughs> we stayed at Kissimmee RV Park and um, Sherwood. Sherwood Forest. Sherwood Forest, yep. We kind of switched back and forth between those. And we stayed in that area specifically because we had an annual pass to uh, Disney and we wanted to go whenever we wanted to go. We didn't want to have to like plan it out. We, and, and both those places were super close, like 15 minutes Yes, from any of the parks, really. Yep. So we were able to go like right after work. We could go watch it for the fireworks or something. And so that's where we stayed two years ago and on Saturdays and Sundays we could spend all day at Disney if yes, we wanted so fun we miss it <laughs> so this year we are also spending our winter in Florida but this year we decided we were going to move all around the state so we were going to kind of go back and forth I mean you can pretty much drive across the state in a few hours so yeah there's way more to Florida than just Orlando <laughs> yeah so we're kind of going to go coast to coast right now. We're on the Gulf side. Mm -hmm. So we spent a couple of weeks in Daytona at Encore there, and then we made our way to uh, the Thousand Trails Orlando Park, which is nice. We and we're, what were there for one week. And we were in the ni the newer part. Yeah. And it was really nice. The spots were huge. I'm actually shocked they did that, to be honest. Yeah, there's, <laughs> they're spaced out really good. They're all cement level, although... The only downfall there is there's, like, bad cell reception, but... Was this the one that uh, was, there was two pools and one hot tub? Yeah, where you went to the playground and all that. Well, we didn't even go to the pool once there. Because no. we were only there a week, and we... It really wasn't hot. No, it wasn't we hot. There. It was cold, and we did go watch the fireworks at Disney once. Yeah, from outside of Disney. <laughs> we got the I free show. It. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we had family come visit us. Yeah. Lexi got her picture taken with, um, our cousin that is a police officer, so it was really cool. It was and cute. She, she got dressed up in her officer uniform for, for, that she for wore Halloween. for Halloween. She got her picture taken with a real Orlando police officer. Was it cool? Yes. Really, really, really cool. Didn't you guys trade handcuffs? He had his uniform on. Yeah, he took your fake handcuffs and let you see his real handcuffs, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> he had a very heavy belt, didn't he? Yes. A lot of stuff on it. Would you be able to wear that belt all day? No. <laughs> I think his belt weighs just as much as you do. <laughs> that Thousand Trails is, is nice. It's a, it's a really big Thousand Trails, and we stayed in the newer part, like I said, and it was really clean, nice. I'm actually very surprised with how big they made the spots. Normally... With these parks, they want to squish everybody in. So I'm actually pretty surprised that those those spots are very open like that. Yeah, and that um, park is actually massive. Yeah, especially since they added on to it. I think it. I want to say. I mean, just ballpark. I think it's like a thousand sites. I think take. they need to um, improve some of the other site, some of the other campgrounds. Yeah. In Florida. <laughs> Wait, it has a thousand sites. I think so. 
Especially wow. since they're raising all of our fees. <laughs> they should get on that. <laughs> Let me see what you're doing did. with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We did some bike rides, and we did some playground time. Yeah, the playground was actually pretty fun. You guys played with a bunch of different kids. And then after there, we moved to Bradenton. Yep, Bradenton. And we are staying at the Winter Quarters Manatee RV Resort. It's an encore, encore park. And it's nice. Yeah, I like this park. Mm-hmm. I like the swimming pool and the hot tub, and it's very peaceful. The It's super close to everything. Yeah, and the people that live here are all very, very nice. Yeah, people who work here are super nice. The neighbors are good. We have some extra special neighbors. Mm-hmm. That saved Dad's bike from being stolen. Yep. Well, they didn't save it from being stolen, but they did call the cops, and the cops took it. So let's talk about stuff <laughs> getting stolen. So uh, we had a bike stolen before. Yep, in Kissimmee. Dad's bike, but it was another one. So this is something to think about when you are camping and you're at RV campgrounds. No matter where you're at. No matter where you're at, exactly. Um, the, the first place we had it stolen from was a gated park. Yep. Um, so we highly recommend that you're locking your bikes up. This might not be something that you think about when you go camping, like if you're not a full timer. Or even um, if you're, if you're in a nice RV park, mm -hmm, exactly. whatever, don't, don't have any faith in humanity. <laughs> I've learned that <laughs> twice, yeah. twice. So make sure you're locking up your bikes and anything else that's expensive or putting it away at night just so that you don't get it stolen. And lock up your drawers or whatever you're putting your stuff in there. Yeah, just make it a habit. Lock your cars, lock your bikes, lock your garage doors, you know, your all your bins and stuff. Yeah, so the first time, tell us about it, Tony. What happened? I think it was taken about 9 o'clock at night, and you and I were watching a movie. Yeah, right outside our window. And they just, yeah, they... And they, it was right near Kylie. So we have bunks, and Kylie is on the bottom bunk, and it was literally right outside her window. He walked that close to her window. I'm, like, disgusted by it. Yeah. Like, he could have broken it into my window and grabbed it. Both times, caught on camera. We would have heard that, though. <laughs> well, let's just talk about the first time. So, it was caught on camera. You didn't notice it until the next day. Yeah. You went I out. think it was actually two days, because I normally, when we were there, I would normally ride my bike every day. But for some reason, I didn't. And I think I had to go back on the camera two days to f see that. Yeah, so we went back and looked at our looked at our security cameras, and Tony saw it. Um, so I think we talked to somebody, and then did you report it stolen that day? No, I didn't report it stolen because I didn't have the serial number. Oh yeah, there wasn't a serial number on the bike, and it was just a it wasn't that even that expensive of a bike, like a few. It was a bucks. nicer bike, but I the the only way the reason I had that bike is because I actually traded one of my work friends uh, a tool. I loaned okay. him a tile saw, like. A year before that and uh never got it back and he he offered this bike to me it was a nice bike i think it was a uh shoot i can't remember what it was yeah but anyway but it was way. a couple hundred dollar bike either way and the saw was you know maybe a couple hundred dollar saw so we traded so i didn't really have that much i didn't have the sentiment into that bike it was a nicer bike but whatever daddy called both thieves a whooper snapper <laughs> <laughs> So that bike was gone. And we bought another bike I within up, a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Yep. And we I bought a really nice one. Buying a new nice bike, specialized bike. And uh, I think I had that bike for like a week. And I saw the guy well, riding the my story. old bike. <laughs> tell the story. So I was sitting in an intersection. And just by creature of habit that I am, I'm always looking at people. And I saw a red mountain bike cross the road on the other side in the crosswalk. And I was just thinking to myself, no way. There's no way. That's my bike. And then he got off of it, and I could see. I had a special seat on it. And was it, didn't you have, like, a I had, phone holder? Yep, a special phone holder that I'd ordered for it. And it was the same color scheme. So, yeah, I turned and made a quick turn and adjustment. Wasn't there also a cop there? Sure, not yet. Sure enough... I, as I drove by, it was my bike, so I pulled over into a bus stop, and I confronted the guy, and we proceeded to argue about whose bike it was for a couple of minutes, and I just had had enough. So how did and you I keep the, the guy cops. there? 
Wow, you called the cop. He stayed there, luckily. Because he thought it was his bike. <laughs> well, he said he had it for a couple months, but it had only been missing for two or three weeks. So <laughs> that's how I knew. And I it specifically knew it was my bike because it had all my parts on it. Yeah. That I put on it. Specific. So. Was it the black one or red one? The red, the red one. one. Your first one? Yep. Yeah. So we got the cops there, and turns out the cop knew who this guy was. He's a local scumbag. <laughs> got my bike back. And at that time, I already had my new bike, so I actually gave that my old mountain bike to our neighbor who didn't have yeah. a bike. Which was very nice. Yeah. So, because we didn't need it. We still got it back because that guy didn't deserve yeah, it. Yeah, no, exactly. And then we ended up giving it to a friend. I'd have rather, park. you know, thrown it away than let that guy keep it. And so then the second bike, we didn't learn our lesson. Well, I learned my lesson, but you didn't learn yours. That's lesson. not true. I've had. <laughs> You always, it it, it come, always falls back on me. You always say to lock them up, and they're almost always locked. Almost always locked up. Except for when they're not. Except for when they're not, and then, then they're easy pickings. <laughs> it's it's like when you get, get your bike stolen, you're like, you want to lock up your bikes, and then you just, like, calm down, like, because it's been so long that you've had a stolen bike, so you just, like, don't want to <laughs> lock up the bikes anymore. And you just yeah, forget that you get, get lazy. Get yep. that you had a Stolen bike, maybe you forget. Get that. comfortable. Get comfortable, yeah. Get yep. comfortable. <laughs> and here we are in a nicer RV park. Yeah, it's a nice RV park, and he was pacing, right? He was, like, stalking the area. Scoping out. Scoping it out. Apparently, the guy was riding around at, like, five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, scoping out sights. Yeah, and he was sitting at, like, the picnic table near our house. It was an empty site. To the right of us. And apparently he decided to park his bike and sit at the picnic table at the empty site. And one of our neighbors who walks his dog super early in the morning um, saw him and confronted him. Because the guy's like wearing a hoodie and he's got this hoodie up. And we actually see this on the camera. He's just sitting there staring at our my bike. And uh, he's got a backpack and he's got his own bike. And the guy's like, hey... What are you doing here? And the guy's like, well, apparently he says, uh, I just like to ride my bike here. And the guy's like, well, if you don't live here, you need to leave. Like, get out of here. And apparently the guy rode off. Fast or and something then, was suspicious. So the yeah, guy followed him yeah, out. Yeah, he followed him because he was walking his dog. And I guess he was riding a little, he, I think he's got an electric scooter or something. He runs his dog. And he um, followed him out. But as he made his way back around, it's a big circle. Our This park is like a one-mile loop. And, uh. The guy apparently came in, came back and just snagged it right away because on the camera he he just rides up. He doesn't stop or anything. He just rides up, does a little circle in our grass, and grabs the bike and drags it along. It's crazy because um, it's not even, like, unless he Googled it on his phone. I mean, it's just a black bike. Like, he doesn't know it's expensive. And, like, it's just a bike. These people are crazy. Like, yeah. they're willing to, like seriously get in trouble like major trouble for stealing a bike mm -hmm. like go steal something worth it <laughs> if you're gonna get in trouble and he looked exactly like a thief <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep he had, he had a his, backpack he had like a his face was covered up and he head was... thing like a thief <laughs> hat <laughs> thing <laughs> who knows if that was his bike yeah so he was probably riding a stolen bike yeah true he probably was and what was in his backpack was it kittens? <laughs> Maybe he stole some kittens. <laughs> Was it money? So anyways, there's more to the story that's interesting. So Tony, I have to back up a minute. Tony is probably one of the luckiest people I know. He's won raffles. He's never won us a lottery, which I don't know why. But yeah. other than that, he's pretty darn lucky. Like I like you just heard the first story. He found his bike like four weeks later. I mean, what are the chances? In in a very busy area, yeah. by the way. Like, it's not, like, a small town. Um, and then this time, so this guy chased him out. So the next day, Tony realizes his bike is gone, and he records it on his phone, sits in here and pouts for a few minutes. And I'm like, just go down there and talk to them. And so he went down there, and what'd they say? She asked me. I said, yeah, I'm here. 
to report a stolen bike. There's nothing you can do about it. I just didn't know if you had cameras or something I could see. And she holds up her phone and she said, is it this bike? And then sure enough, it was. And uh, she hands me a piece of paper with a detective's name and phone number on it. And apparently, the second time the guy had come back, a neighbor down the road saw him. Because he was riding his he bike. He was riding and his bike. had Tony's bike next to him. And wheeling my bike next to it. So yeah. he looked very suspicious. If he would have just got on your bike, I mean, yeah. he probably would have got away with it. But the neighbor called the cops. Yep, neighbor called the cops. And luckily, there was a, you know, there was a sheriff right down the road. So he got out onto the main road and didn't even make it a quarter of a mile. And he got busted. And the manager of this resort here passed them. She said, she told me the story. She passed by. There was a guy with two bikes and a sheriff. And he was, like, you know, being detained or whatever. She didn't know what was going on at the time, but then she later learned. And I uh, got a hold of the sheriff, the detective, actually, and um, gave him a copy of my video. And I guess he's also somebody this, who steals bikes a lot. Like, yeah, these people are crazy. This guy... Um, he suspected, anyways, have to have taken eleven bikes from this park. I don't know the time frame, but wow, eleven bikes! I knew he had stolen eleven bikes, but I didn't know it was from this specific park. So not only did he not get a new bike, he also got a felony. And I just got my bike back today from the. And he put office. a light on it for you. He put a little blinking light on it, so thank what? you. When did he have the time to do that? And the first bike that was stolen in that amount of time they had it, they put a drink holder on that bike for me. Yeah, so you've gotten some extra accessories. But the blinking light is really funny to me because that is literally like probably 20 minutes after he stole it, he was yeah. caught. Yeah, it, yeah, probably 15, 20 minutes, something like that. <laughs> like, when did Maybe he, he had a blinker, uh, blinker light in his backpack. He probably did, and like your mom said... He probably did that to maybe seem less suspicious. Yeah. If he's just riding along and there's like a blinking red light for safety. Yeah. Nobody will think twice about it, but (laughs) other than you're riding a bike, pulling a bike. (laughs) So So suspicious. Either way, I got it back. He should have. I mean, I'm sure his bike wasn't worth as much as your bike. He probably should have put his bike... Like yeah. in the bushes somewhere. Yeah, that's where he told he told the officer that he found it in the bushes when they asked him about it. Yeah, he should have left his in the bushes. Yeah, but thankfully he didn't, and you got it back. So yep. is it locked up now? It will be as soon as we're done with this podcast. What do you? I mean, last time the first bike was stolen while we were literally sitting here. But it was it was later. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> it's only six o'clock. Six oh three right now. I don't know. It's kind of dark. Thieves could be out here, especially bike thieves. So anyways, the moral of the story is lock your stuff up. Don't trust anybody. <laughs> and lock your house. Yep. Yeah, lock, lock your, your house. car, lock your house. Lock everything. <laughs> and also a few days ago, I was able to go to a uh, car event. I was hoping something would be going on at the Freedom Factory. It's a it's a place like a, you know, a YouTube celebrity content creator guy. Bought a racetrack and has rebuilt it and created an awesome business there, and he has car events there. So I was able to go to the 2.4 hours of Le Mullets. Yeah, he. so a couple of weeks ago, you had, actually might have been a month ago, you said, hey, when we're in Bradenton, can I do well, that? Or like, do you, you want to go do this? And I'm like, that sounds like zero fun. You can go do that on your own. <laughs> Thanks. I love going to car shows. Well, Dad should have taken you with him. <laughs> and then you couldn't have stayed here and had a girls' night. But I had fun. I went solo. Yeah. But what it was, was a good time. It was, I mean, I think it was. Who won? Uh, Kurt Busch, the professional NASCAR racer, won that race. So and what did, it is, is like, yeah. yeah, it's like, um, I think it was 18 cars, and they're all the same car. So they all have no, like, special upgrades other than every car has a little nitrous kit on it. But they're all, like, I guess you could call celebrity or YouTubers or people like that that come, that are invited, and they all they have a team. So there's 36 people, and they, mid-race, they switch drivers. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah. So who? So the first 45 minutes um, so is one driver. Kurt Busch, what, who was his team? Who, cause they Kurt Busch, uh, his, the partner who raced the first half was Vaughn Gittin Jr., who's a 
also like a very famous car guy. He's like a he's a drift racer. Like so, champion. they both won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Was it was either of them a girl or a boy? There were some girls that were driving. Now, do they pick their partner or? I think so. Okay. I think so. Or is it like a draw the hat? No, I think they team up. So the the what you're saying is they all have the same car. They all have the same stuff. Yep. There's no like making it faster. They can with decorate stuff. their car any way they want, but you can't modify it. You can't modify like f- performance parts or anything like that. So they all have nobody has really has an advantage. It comes down to skill. Yeah. I think I have to say that I think you would do pretty good in that. Can it was fu- it it looked like it was a blast. <laughs> so, but yeah, we were there. Had a good time. Saw some good racing. And that's how far away from here? It was only 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So if you're staying at this park, Yeah, you check can go to the out. Freedom Factory. And they have events all the time? Um, Not all the time, but f- fairly frequently. They had another event the next day called Cletus and Cars, where it's like a big, huge burnout contest and stuff, but I didn't go to that one. I've mentioned before on a podcast that we have a whiteboard on our refrigerator that we put different things that we want to do in that specific area. It's a very small board, and we just put just where we're at at that moment. Yeah, we just try to put like four or five ideas. So not in Florida in general. It's just this area. And we put on the board here, we have Anna Maria Island, which we went and visited. We'll tell you a story about it in that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh, we also have Sea a Manatee, which we got to do yesterday. Um, so we drove about, what, 30 minutes away? Yep. To the Manatee Visit Viewing Center. Yeah, Manatee Viewing Center. Yep. At Apollo Beach. And it was really area. cool. It's, I think, created by the... The power company. The power company, which is, like, kind of across the river there. Um, but you get to go out on this, like, boardwalk, and the manatees are there. Tony actually got to see a stingray. Um, but we In had to the go manatee out. area. Yeah, in the manatee area. Um, but we had to go out separately because Lexi and I forgot our shoes. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Dad, how do you do ask that? Ask me later how somebody forgets their shoes. <laughs> so I went out and looked first, and then I was just, I'm like, I'm just going to go out and look and see if it's even worth coming back to. Uh, and then Tony went out. I was like, that's pretty cool. So go on out. And then so Tony went out, and then the girls were pouting. I felt bad. So we carried our children through the entire place. And I'm eight years old, and I'm, like, tall. Yeah. Like 65 pounds, I think. So I had to piggyback you. So we carried them through the whole thing so they could see it. But it's a really cool place. Um, When you first go in, there is a, like, stingray area. Yeah, and they have a bunch of stingrays in there that you can see them. And pet them. Yep, you can pet them. Just on their wing. Yep. Because I heard, like, the voice speaker thing say that if you touch it on their head or mouth, it's very sensitive. Head or back? Or, no. Yeah, it's head or back. Mm. Or mouth, I think. Well, the mouth is underneath. It'd be really hard to touch its mouth. Oh, yeah. That's very interesting, though. I did not know that. Have you guys ever touched a stingray before? Yeah. Remember at Disney? Or was that Disney? Yeah, Epcot. Probably, maybe something like that. Animal Kingdom. I don't know if it was Animal Kingdom. I think it was Epcot. In that, where the dolphins are. Yeah, the Mm -hmm. under the sea thing. And if it wasn't there, uh, it was, where was that other place we went? In Michigan. Toledo Zoo, Detroit Zoo. I don't remember. I think they all kind of, they always have. Have like like an area. Or uh, Louisiana we, in New Orleans. Oh, we did the was it, it was Louisiana, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. Either way. <laughs> There's you, been so many. Yeah. <laughs> Either and way, you've gotten to see them um, and pet them before. And I remember that we got to see a little white stingray. And I, she was born on oh, yeah, Christmas. Mm-hmm. She was born on Christmas, and she was, like, white. Yep. Tiny so that thing. was, I bet, New Orleans, because we were there on New Year's. Yep. And it was a baby. So that makes sense. But that place is super cool. I can't. We're actually going to go back with shoes. Yes, because they have a um, walking area. We're talking about the Manatee Viewing Center, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to walk out. They have like a area where you can walk out. I don't know how far that is. And then, well, there's several. There's, I think there's at least two boardwalks, and I think there's another trail that you can take. Well, there's that thing that you can like walk up. Oh, like an observation deck. Yes. <laughs> Way up, and then see around. 
But, but it was a really cool place. Yeah, the manatee. There, uh, how many? I bet you there was close to two dozen manatees, and they're wild. Yeah, they're it's like an inlet. Yep. That they swim up. And then there was a, so they're underneath the boardwalk. Then, like on the other side, is a little bit shallow area, and it's not as busy there. And so I heard somebody saying that that's where a lot of times the mom will go with their baby. I didn't think anything of it. And then we were there with the girls, and the mom and the baby, like, popped up. Yep. And we got to see them. It was really cool. And cute. The baby is so cute. hmm And do you think that the stingray, the stingray that you saw in the water, it could have went from that little stingray pool? I don't like know. No, out no. Or that pool was just um, by itself. We couldn't go pet the, pet the stingrays because it said... Shirt and shoes required in the facility. And, of course, the stingrays was in the facility. So Yep. I hope you learned your lesson. But yeah, the stingray, that I, the stingray that I saw, like, breached out of the water. It was awesome. So even though they didn't have their shoes, it was still really fun. I can't wait to go back with shoes. And um, it was a cool experience, so I recommend going. Yeah, I'm going to go back with shoes and a camera. And you get to check off manatee off your list. Yesterday, we also drove, um, on our way home, we drove out on, what is that? It's called, it's called the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. It goes over Tampa Bay. And it was really, really cool. It was like $1.50. It's a toll road. Yeah, it's a toll, yep. Um, But we got to drive out there, and we pulled down, like, there's, like, a rest area on both sides. And we pulled down towards the rest area, Fishing Pier Yeah, I think we're on, like, the north side. And we were going to go down, check out the pier. Before we got to, there's like a pay booth. I think it's like four bucks a car. They, they have a small fee if you want to go out and fish and all that. I don't think that's small. It was a $4 a car, $4 <laughs> an adult, and then $2 for kids. So it had been like 16 bucks or something for us to just drive to the end of the pier. <laughs> but most people that go out there go to fish. So Yeah, true. <laughs> so if you're a fisherman or it's probably worth it if you're going to go out there and spend all day. We were just, like, out driving around. So and it was late. Already, yeah, yeah, it was almost dark. It was, like, sunset. And, um, yeah, we got out on almost to the booth. And just out of the corner of my eye, I was like, I saw something out in the bay. And and then Tony and Lexi at the same time yep. said, dolphin! Yep. <laughs> yeah, like, arched out of the water. It was awesome. Yeah, but they didn't really, like, jump. Just their Fins and half of their back. Yeah, yep. they were just kind of swimming out. But we got to hang, it was like a pod, I don't know, four or five of them. Yeah. And we got to watch them for quite a quite a long time. Yeah, we're probably there More for 15 minutes. And four or five? I think there was only about four or five there. They were just moving around. But it was awesome. It was like right near sunset, so we had a pretty backdrop. Mm-hmm. And we were kind of GoProing and taking some pictures. I as took like a five-minute video. <laughs> Of my yep. favorite sea animal in the whole universe. Yeah. Did you ever look them up to see what they actually are? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> but it's cool. Some of them got, you know, their dorsal fin and their tail came all the way out of the water. I wish pretty. we saw their faces. Yeah. But they were probably eating. And there's like kind of like a rocky shore like next to us when, where we were parked. Yep. Um, there's all kinds of like birds. I was like, I wish a dolphin just came up like right like closer, <laughs> not like so far away. Rubbed his belly on the mm-hmm. rocks. And then we also saw a guy fishing. Yeah, we went to the other and side. And he caught a shark. Yep. <laughs> like, I don't know, a baby shark. Kind of like two feet, maybe. Yeah. Not sure what kind of shark it was, but we saw him standing there, and then he looked very surprised and uh, started reeling it in and kind of fighting with it for a minute or two. So I got out and asked him if he had a net. I could help him. Um, but by that time, he had got it up to the shore. And realized it was a shark, and he's like, oh, Yeah, you could see the disappointment. He was <laughs> not fishing for sharks, so. <laughs> so it was cool. We got to see some dolphins. We got to see a bunch of fishermen doing their fishing. We got to see a shark. Birds. Lots of birds. And a creepy RV. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We saw a... Class A, really nice Class A, and it was just kind of like pulled off, and then it was like uneven, which drew my. I was like, gosh, they didn't, they didn't even like put their jacks down, like because yeah, it was definitely, it was extremely unlevel. Yes, 
and it had a missing window. But yeah, for being a newer RV, it was in not good shape, and it was not it looked very suspicious. So. And the stairs were out. Yeah. I mean, the actual RV was in very good shape. The whole RV oh, was very the, nice, except for that one window. There was a Looked window suspicious. busted out of it. Yeah. But it was parked right by a tree, like, with a branch, like, laying yeah. right on. Like, it was so, somebody parked there. I don't know. I feel like somebody, the person that parked the RV there is not the person that owned it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just the way we know, like, we don't go near trees. We don't, like, like that's what drew my eye to it right away. I'm like, gosh, he's awfully close to that. And then I realized he was uneven, and then I realized yeah, when you jacks put, weren't out. And then, when you put a slide out, you want to be level. Yeah. You, and this thing was not level whatsoever. Yeah. And so, then we saw weird. the window was broke, so I bet you it was stolen. And I I mean, I don't know if somebody knew it, if the police knew about it or not. Yeah. I feel like we should have called. And then the other thing that we did while we were here is we went out on Anna Maria Island, which was really cool. The beach there was so pretty. Uh, there was, like, some music playing. That might have been a bar there. I think it's, like, the um, like Manatee Cafe or something. Oh, okay. It's, it's, a pretty, it's, like, at the time it was closed, but there's, like, a store, like a gift shop. I think they had like a bunch of swimwear and towels and like trinkets and stuff. Well, there was something open. What was that? It was, I think it was a c- cafe or bar or something. Oh, okay. Because they had, yeah, they had music going. They okay. had lights all over, twinkle lights going. I know. Party time. Right on the beach. It was cool. It was nice. The kids got to play in the water. Found some awesome shells, right? Yeah. And one looked just like a crab one. And there's one thing, it was like huge, like, I don't know, four inches. And it looked like a oyster shell. Like it's brown. It was like a perfect clam shell. Yeah. Perfect oyster. And there was like like a shell with like spikes. Spikes. Yeah, that one was really neat. I've it's never cool. really seen one like that. I found that in the sand, not in the water. Yeah. I think the waves time. are a little calmer over here. Yeah, it was like super calm. They were like you know, tiny waves over here. When we were in Daytona, there was like drowned our <laughs> drowned our kids' waves because <laughs> we tried a couple of times. We were jumping waves. It was fun. Jumping waves, drinking seawater, all that good stuff. So we have a couple other things on our list while we're here. We, there's a river walk that I want to go check out. Um, there's a state park, DeSoto. Or... DeSoto, I think. Yeah. Um, and then Cortez Beach I want to check out. So, I'm pretty. The, uh, this area is really nice. I like yeah. this area. I'm pretty excited. We stayed here. Yeah, we'll have to come back to this one because mm-hmm. it's in it. I guess from here to, um, Bra- like Bradenton Beach, I guess is about I think 25 minutes. Yeah, we haven't even been there yet. But just to the coast, from here to the coast is 25 minutes. So I did want to go. Then to, you can drive all it, up Sarasota? and down. Sarasota. Yeah, Sarasota I did want to go there. Quite a ways away. 45 minutes or something. Oh, is it yeah. a full 45? But I hear it's nice. But this campground, I like the pool, mm-hmm. and I like the hot tub is working. I mean, for Pete's there, sake, it feel I feel like we haven't had a hot tub in forever. Well, yeah, the <laughs> they're um, always broken. Daytona didn't have a hot tub; they just had a pool. When we went swimming, it what the heater was broken; it wasn't even on. It was freezing cold. Um, and then Thousand Trails Orlando, the hot tub was broken. They did get it fixed while we were there, but we didn't find out until, like, the day before we were leaving. So we never got to get into the hot tub. They have two pools, I think. This place has two pools and one hot tub. And they have a huge activity center. They've got a gym. Yes. Laundry. Couple and they got, like, the shuffleboard things. Yeah, big shuffleboard. They got horseshoes. And guess what we saw today at the shuffleboard? Well, Dad saw it first, and then he took us. What? Guess what we saw. An alligator. Yeah. And we were just, last night we were just like running around the shuffleboard. (laughs) And there was an alligator in there. It wasn't in the shuffleboard area, but it was close. They can run fast. (laughs) They then ate us. And we were going back to the RV and we saw a flamingo. Yeah. 
like a pink flamingo. And it was flying by itself. Kylie thought it was a kite or a drone. <laughs> I didn't even know flamingos could fly. Are you sure it was a flamingo? 100% yeah. it was a flamingo. It was pink, and it was big, and it had long pink legs, orangey. It had a big hooked bill. But it was all by itself. But, you know, right behind us, for a long ways, is a big marsh. But how cool. I don't think I've ever seen a wild flamingo. Right. So we saw both animals that Florida it has a lot of. Yeah, Florida is a birding state for sure. Big time. <laughs> so a couple of years ago when we spent the time in Florida, we stayed in one area for the most part. Uh, we, we had booked out Kissimmee RV Park like months before we got here. And we booked it a few months out. So we weren't like hopping as much and playing like the Thousand Trail Encore game. Uh, and I have to say, it's kind of a pain. We are moving all over, and so we kind of, our options are more open because we can go everywhere. But Florida is very, very, very busy. Mm-hmm. And I'm not that big a fan of it, to be honest. <laughs> I I liked out west where, you know, we we had great spots inside the encores there, and then we could also boondock yeah. anywhere, pretty much, which was really nice. Yeah, in Florida, you're kind of stuck f- Going park to park. Mm-hmm. There's not as much boondocking. Yeah. So and and to be honest, you wouldn't want to boondock because it's so humid. Yeah. Yeah. The weather's, you know, the temperatures are cool. It hasn't been super hot at all since we've been in Florida, but it has been humid, so that makes it harder to boondock. Can't run the air all night like mm-hmm. you would like to. It is cool because we're by the ocean. I miss the ocean. Um. So I'm excited that we did the winter here, but um, how busy it is is kind of. Not as fun. Plus, <laughs> so when we've spent... I think next winter we'll be back towards... I think we're going to try Texas and New Mexico and move into Arizona for the winter. Yeah. But it's it, that's something to be said as far as we just spent most of our time out west in a lot, mainly small towns and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and you know, with good boondocking. And you get back into the cities and all yes. the hustle and bustle and stuff, and it's kind of... It's interesting, like, I wonder how we're going to do as we travel. Like, this winter, our plans are to do the East Coast all the way up to Maine. And I'm super excited to do it because of all the history and everything. But at the same time, we have all the cities. And That's pretty, yeah, we're pretty it's much going to be, be, like, tight and yep. cities. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready for that. <laughs> I've been spoiled. Yeah, I miss mountains already. I know. It's only been a little while. It's funny. It's funny how we do that, though, because, like, when we were on the West, I was like, I miss water. I mm-hmm. need water so bad. I need water. I need green. And now we're over here, and I'm like, I want the desert. <laughs> desert. Too much green. Too much water. I need the mountains. <laughs> yep. Yeah, beaches are cool, but mountains are better, I think, in my opinion. So what's super funny is, like, this just leads to our lifestyle. Like, we're not settling down anytime yeah. soon. Because we just can't decide where we want to be. Yeah, if somebody asked me right now, <laughs> if somebody gave me X amount of dollars right now to go buy a piece of property, I wouldn't be able to. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know where to put it. So out west, out east. I would definitely put it either in Michigan. <laughs> you can't even decide or, right now. Or um, you have no, Florida. you can't. You got to choose right now. One spot, go. Florida. Florida? You just Yuck. picked one random spot. <laughs> Lexi, one spot right now. Where Where is it? Smoky Mountains. Oh, you Mountains. really liked it. And that was a good spot. So I think that's it for this week. And today we have a... a digging. What we're digging is about what we're loving this week. From a five-year-old, an eight-year-old, mom, and dad. So I'm going to go first. What are you digging, mom? I am digging the new Animal Crossing (laughs) add-on, which is, what is it called? Animal, oh, Happy Home Paradise. Or Paradise, Happy Home Paradise Planning. Yes, something (laughs) like that. (laughs) (laughs) It's a lot of fun. It's like an add-on to our Animal Crossing game that we played. We All three of us have it. Except Dad, he doesn't even have a Switch. You need, you like have a school. 
Yeah, you get to design different houses, and it's like buildings. an ex- It's like all the fun parts of our Animal Crossing game in another game. So the girls and I have had a few uh, girls' nights where we've done Switch fun, and it's been it's been cool. Yeah, movies. We throw a movie on and play Switch, and. The girls have finally passed me in that game because <laughs> I think they have that completely finished, that game. Yeah. I'm still working on it. We beat the game. We can Now we can just do whatever we want. Because we did all the buildings that are on Ladia's island. Lottie, not Ladia. <clears throat> the other part of that is the 2.0 update on the Animal Crossing game, which is also really cool because a lot of the things that we wanted are on there, which has been making the game extra fun and it's just given us a lot more stuff to do I was kind of getting to a part where it was like stale and it wasn't as fun to play it and so now it is super fun again because you can make meals and drinks and eat them and Harvey's Island is all opened up yep and there's a lot of bunches there's a lot of different like RVs which is really cute. <laughs> They're like little campers. They're like full-time RVers. <laughs> <laughs> they travel. What are you digging, Kylie? I'm digging all the campgrounds that have pools. We've been to so many campgrounds, and we've went to their pools. Well, we had a streak there for a while with no pool, no swimming. So we're back to pools, and you like it. Yeah, I love pools. So what have you been doing in the pool? Um... Lexi, I practiced for a couple of minutes with Lexi. She's learning how to doggy paddle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and mom's teach. No, ju- um, swim without a floaty. Yeah, and doggy. And I am learning to float on my back like a sea star. <laughs> 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 and learning to jump in the pool, holding my breath without my goggles. Nice. Lexi, digging? Which, digging. Which literally took me like. Two minutes to learn. (laughs) I'm digging chapter books. They are, like, sometimes they're thin. So the books that you've been reading are Billy B. Brown books, right? And they're about 50 pages long, and the text is kind of big. Um, But you flew through them. I mean, you read a few of those in, like, two days. Like, a day and a half, really. And le- one of the books she just read in one day. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, it was the elf one. Yes. So I'm very impressed. I think you read six total mm-hmm. of those yeah. books. Billy um, B. books are In six. about a week. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome. I didn't even believe her, so I quizzed her, and she... She uh, knew everything. She knew everything. <laughs> so she is doing really, really good on reading. I'm very proud of her. So now what did you just start reading on your Kindle? Um, Treehouse. Magic Treehouse, yep. She just started that book today, and she read a couple chapters or just one? One, because I'm at chapter two right now. Okay, but it was pretty good, and she she didn't have any problems, so pretty good. That's a much thicker book, so I'm proud of you, Lex. Good job. Well, it's on her Kindle, so you don't know if it's thick. (laughs) Well, I know those (laughs) books are thick. (laughs) Thicker, they're not. The Kindle's th- thick, but not the book. You just finished a book today too, right? Yeah. What'd actually, you finish? It's actually like an inch long, <laughs> or not an inch long, an inch wide. It's like what was the name of it? Esperanza I've- Rising. It's like you're doing really good with reading as well. I'm proud of you guys. But this took me like a few, a couple weeks to finish this because it's like super big. And you didn't read it every day. And like you're supposed to. And Lexi is super good at reading those Billy B books because she only reads for 20 or 30 minutes a day yeah. for independent Sometimes reading. my timer goes off. E- even I just keep going since they're so good. That's awesome. It just sucks you in, right? Uh-huh. All right. What are you digging, Tony? I'm digging the Florida wildlife. I've been getting some pictures, nerding out a little bit. You got one today of the gator, right? Yep, took a good picture of the gator today, which is, I think was probably about six or seven feet. You should put that on our post thing. Instagram? Yeah, I probably will. Yeah. Um, or whoever dad writes, like, the post for our podcast. Yeah, I, we've seen alligator. Today I got some cool pictures of an osprey. 
eating a fish, which we've seen, the, I think, the same Osprey over and over and over. He likes eating his fish at the same spot. And a big log Oh, he has pole. a nest there, right? No, there's no nest, but... Oh, I thought there was a nest. I think he's little... over in the marsh, too, because earlier today I heard him screeching or whatever they do. Is there a do. boardwalk over there or something? I don't Can think we so, walk over no. There? But uh, every day I see it flying around this lake that's here at this RV park. But So, yeah, there's the osprey. There's the flamingo. There's all Alligator. kinds of water birds. There's, like... Manatee. Was, this the morning pelicans. I was... Pelicans. Yeah, pelic- pelicans are huge. Um, this morning I was out cooking on the griddle and there's like these little ibis birds oh they're so like cute. right next to me just in the grass eating every bug they can find yeah <laughs> so yeah i'm kind of enjoying all the nature all right that's what we're digging that's all the birds and animals we saw so that is a little bit about Braden 10 i really like this area yeah i'm glad we tested it out and all of the disappointments disappointments and mistakes we've made <laughs> Thanks. Well, the bikes are locked up, so we won't be making that mistake. She yeah. said all the disappointments and mistakes we've made and stares at you. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a disappointment, Dad. I know, right? Uh, but I really like this area. So yeah. this little mid-Florida on the Gulf side is nice. I think next we got to push down towards the southern tip and see yeah. what's down there. Well, I think Christmas and New Year's will be down that's near on the Miami. So that's other on the side, Atlantic side. But yeah. It'll be fun. I can't wait. I hear the beaches are good there. Yeah. I think that's going to do it for episode 23. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram where we share what's happening right now. So we'll share lots of fun photos and stories at The Faolas. You can find the show notes at our website at thefaolas.com slash 23. See you later. Bye. See you next week. Balupas. Wow. How do you say goodbye in Spanish, Kylie? Au revoir. No. Nope. Adios. That's French. Adios. <laughs> Is it French? Adios. Yeah. Au revoir. <laughs> Is it goodbye? <laughs> Adios. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's very nice, Lex. I know. <laughs> I was going to say something else, and you threw me off when you said that. <laughs> I spent the Florida, spent the winter in Florida. We spent the Florida at winter. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to edit that out, <laughs> Kylie. Sorry. Kylie's over here profiling. Yeah, it's a profile. Do you think they could decorate their car? Trump is Santa, who brings presents, and Joe Biden is the nightmare maker. Jeez. <laughs> Kylie. <laughs> I swear we don't brainwash our children. Or like oh, maybe know. like yeah. jumped out. <laughs> no, it can't jump out. It's far away. This isn't finding Nemo. <laughs> I think my spirit animal is a manatee. Why? <laughs> don't it's like to eat eat and just hang out. Sleep. In the water. <laughs> Long time ago I used, I guess I would say my spirit animal was probably something cooler. <laughs> But now I'm like I can relate. I'm a dolphin in the and I, I'm a dolphin. I can relate to manatee now in my At 40s. least you're not a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe um they were going to park and they didn't know that they were parking under a branch and they got stuck. Maybe they were like dolphins and they just drove into a tree, jumped out their broken window. And ran to see the dolphins. Do you guys know how to tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? How? What, Lexi? How? A crocodile's thing is sharper. What do you think, Kylie? A crocodile will see you later. No. (laughs) (laughs) Dad Dad was going for the joke and Lexi was doing the realness. Yes, Lexi, you are right. Crocodile's snouts are pointier. Alligators are rounder. Well, one we'll see you later, and one we'll see you after a while. (laughs) See you later. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Adios. Bye.